In this video, I'm going to share with you 14 best practices for B2B blogging to increase your organic traffic and lead generation from your B2B blog. Hey, what's up, Ems? Edward Jack here from B2BDigitalMarketers.com and if you are planning to start with B2B blogging, then you must check out these best practices or if you are already doing it, then you should check it out anyway. You will learn how you should search for keywords to get traffic and leads for your business. Optimize your content and grow your website authority with B2B blogging. Also, I've spoken with Big G and he was not really happy with your like button clicking performance and you should definitely do better with this video. Otherwise, he said he will release a new unannounced core update. That's what the boss said at least. Nothing I can do. No, seriously. If you enjoyed this video and it helps you, please help me back by clicking on the like button and leaving a nice comment below. It helps a lot. Thanks. So without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, what is actually a B2B blogging? B2B blogging or business to business blogging is blogging by business to attract a B2B audience. And it refers to a process of planning and producing content such as blog posts, infographics, case studies, industry research, and other materials on the company blog in order to create brand awareness among company target audience and generate high quality leads. B2B blogging allows a company to share its expertise with the industry. It helps increase trust between the readers, which brings opportunities to engage and start a conversation. And now, when you understand what is B2B blogging, let's discuss the best practices for B2B blogging. The first practice I have for you is to generate keywords around your targeted topic clusters. For example, if you are in the whiskey niche, then one of the topic clusters you would want to target, for example, is the Irish whiskey topic. You simply want to target all the keywords related to the topic Irish whiskey to create a topical relevancy on your website and therefore on the topic in the search. So to create a topic cluster, you simply need to toss one of your main topics, also called seed keywords, in keyword research tools like SE Ranking. In this example, it is the seed keyword or topic, Irish whiskey, and I also select my targeted location. And then in the keyword suggestion report, I select all the keywords that are subtopics to my main keyword, Irish whiskey, and can be targeted with the individual blog post. Also, make sure to check every keyword to ensure you don't end up with a keyword cannibalization. For example, the keywords best Irish whiskey and good Irish whiskey have the same ranking pages. Thus, you should target only the keyword best Irish whiskey and add the keyword good Irish whiskey as an LSI keyword in the content to rank for both of these keywords and maximize your SEO potential. And just like this, you can find SEO keywords for your main targeted topic clusters. The second very important practice you should follow with your B2B blogging is to focus on semantic SEO. Search engines always struggle with understanding the content on the internet and semantic SEO helps search engines to properly understand the content on your website and how your content is related to each other so search engines can better rank your content in terms of relevancy. And going deeper with semantic SEO means you should not only focus on keywords in your topic cluster but on the relevant entities or topics and subtopics in your niche that you want to rank for. The goal with semantic SEO is to help crawlers to understand your content by using terms, entities, and facts that are related to each other. For example, if I want to write the article about SEO, then I would mention all the terms, entities, and facts like keyword research, on-page SEO, off-page SEO, ranking factors, and etc. within the article to help search engines understand your content. And then I would go deeper into the rabbit hole and write about on-page SEO. And again, mention important entities like title text, meta description, keyword density, and etc. And after that, I would write an article about meta description and so on. And this is how you should think about your keyword targeting and content creation. What you want to do is to go in depth with your content and address as many entities, facts, and terms within your niche as you can. Because that's what Google is looking for. They want a source that provides all the information within the niche. And therefore, you should optimize your keyword targeting around your niche related terms to meet your users' needs. Be very strategic with your keyword targeting and then interconnect all those terms, facts and entities together with internal or external links. Just like I did in these paragraphs, I connect the entities I have mentioned here with my articles or relevant outside resources. 
The third very important practice I have for you is to search for profitable keywords. The truth is that B2B blogging is not only about generating organic traffic for your website, but also about generating leads or sales for your business. In fact, B2B blogging can be a great way to boost your revenue by directing your potential prospects to your product or service pages. For example, why do you think companies that are developing sales management software are targeting keywords like best sales management tools? It is because if they rank in the top positions, they have the direct power over the content and they can promote their own tool. For example, Nutshell.com is recommending their tool as the first tool. This means around 90% of the people that visited this page saw the first recommended tool. And according to SE ranking, the page is generating around 1200 organic traffic, which is usually an underestimated number. And you can easily calculate how many leads this one blog post can approximately generate. Around 90% of the people saw the first tool, which is 1080 from 1200. And if I take a modest conversion rate of 10% from 1080 people, we have around 108 leads every single month from this blog post alone. Profitable keywords like this have a very high conversion rate as the search intent is very clear, but this depends on the industry as well. So as you can see, targeting profitable keywords is very important, but don't only target profitable keywords as Google wouldn't rank you. Another very important practice I want to mention for B2B blogging is to analyze competitors ranking keywords. Analyzing competitors ranking keywords, aka content gap analysis, is a technique where you find a close competitor that is doing well with their SEO and then sees the keywords they are ranking for, but you don't. Let me show you how it works. Step one, find your close competitor. To do that, you can use SE ranking competitive research tool. Just pop your domain there, select your targeted location and click on analyze. Then I go to the competitors report where I will get hundreds of close competitors based on my ranking keywords. Step two, select the right competitor. Not every competitor displayed in this report is the right one for keyword gap analysis. For example, the competitor webfx.com is not a good competitor for me, despite their ranking for over 15,000 SEO keywords. Because their targeting in marketing is so broad that it would be really difficult for me to find interesting keywords in my niche. But a competitor like backlinko.com is a perfect competitor as Brian is mainly targeting keywords in the SEO niche with a bit of content marketing. Just like me, and just like me, he started alone and slowly built a team. And step number three, analyze your competitor. And once you have your competitor, then you just need to compare your ranking keywords with your competitor using SE ranking competitor comparison. And then check out the missing and unique keyword steps to find high quality keywords that your competitor is ranking for, but you don't, but you should be targeting. And there you have it. The next important practice is to analyze search intent for your targeted keywords. Search intent means the reason behind the search query and what content they expect and want to see. It gives you the essential information on what content you should create to target the keyword, as well as if the keyword is a primary or LSI keyword. Also, search intent helps you to target keywords across all stages of the buyer journey to maximize your SEO potential from B2B blogging. So to find search intent, you just need to analyze the Google Serps for your targeted keyword. I recommend you to use keyword research tools to get the exact search results for your targeted location. First, put the keyword that you want to target in the keyword research tool. I use SE ranking and let's use the keyword SEO strategies as an example to analyze search intent. And then I go to the organic results report to see the top ranking pages. Now, this keyword is clearly informational type as all the pages are blog posts. However, according to ranking pages, I can see that the keyword SEO strategies is not a primary keyword, but more like additional or secondary keyword to other primary keywords. The first primary keyword is SEO strategy, as I can see in the top ranking pages. And the second primary keyword is SEO techniques. So the keyword SEO strategies is not a primary keyword and has mixed search intent. And for me to rank for this keyword, I need to target the keywords SEO techniques and SEO strategy. Therefore, let's analyze the keyword search intent for SEO strategy. So this is an informational type of keyword as well, as I need to create a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create SEO strategy to rank for this keyword. As you can see, determining search intent is not as difficult. You just need to follow Google search results. Also, you can use my table of keyword modifiers that indicates the search intent, but please take it with a pinch of salt. The sixth important practice I recommend you to follow is to target low difficulty keywords first when you are starting out. 
And the reason is quite obvious, as you have much bigger chance to rank for those keywords in top positions compared to the competitive keywords. As a rule of thumb, the easy to rank keywords are long tail keywords compared to the body or head keywords. However, it's better to always use an SEO tool to better understand the keyword difficulty. For example, you are in the gardening niche and you found a bunch of keywords related to your niche. So you can pop these keywords in keyword book analysis like SE ranking and you will get the keyword difficulty for all of your keywords as well as with other additional helpful information. And like this, you can start targeting those keywords with the lowest keyword difficulty to start driving organic traffic with small website authority. Of course, you still want to follow your topic cluster model and target your keywords there first and not just jump from the keyword to keyword across different clusters. Another very important practice you should think of is to add LSI keywords to your articles and this has a lot to do with semantic SEO. Many marketers have the opinion that LSI keywords do not exist, including John Miller, the search advocate for Google, who stated, there is no such thing as LSI keywords. Anyone who is telling you otherwise is mistaken. Sorry. However, this publication says that Google does use words that frequently occur together. So to stay accurate and follow what Google says, the LSI keywords are words that occur frequently with topic anchors in a given set of queries. And Google is looking for word concurrence to generate topics and better understand your content. So what does it mean a topic in SEO and keyword setting? A topic is a noun and any keyword or query that can be targeted with the individual article to target this noun or topic. However, for semantic reason, this has to be related to your niche or targeted keyword, so it makes sense for Google and users as well. Let me give you an example. Let's say you want to target the keyword link building strategies. So you create your document and start creating an outline by adding the strategies you know. So all these strategies are LSI keywords, as these frequently appear together with your targeted topic or keyword, link building strategies. Then you add important category keywords and topics that are related to the topic, which are, for example, link building, off-page SEO, and SEO, as these are the main categories where this keyword or topics belongs to. Then you can add other related LSI keywords or topics to this keyword, such as backlinks, page rank, website authority, Google ranking factors, and etc. You can also do keyword research to find related keywords to your targeted keyword, like link building tips, links for a website, and how to build links for SEO, as these are some great examples to include within your content. And after, you have a solid outline and list of frequently appearing words together, which I call LSI keywords, to help you rank higher in search and improve your ranking relevancy. Of course, this is just an example, and there could be a lot more LSI keywords. Also, in many cases, all these terms might appear in the text naturally without you even thinking about it. That's why you need to be a subject matter expert. But having a list of LSI keywords helps you to remember important terms that you should mention in your writing. However, it's important to not sacrifice the quality of your content and not write like a robot. The next important practice for your B2B blogging is to ensure you have optimized your SEO keyword placement. Yes, Google, Bing and other search engines are getting smarter with understanding of your content on your website. However, search engines are still using a certain on-page SEO aspects to better understand what's your content about when assessing your web page for ranking. So let me show you the eight best keyword placement practices by looking at one of my articles why that SEO and where I included the primary keyword as well as other LSI keywords. First, include your primary keyword in the title tag and in the meta description include your primary and one or two LSI keywords in a natural fitting way. Second, include only the primary keyword in your URL. Third one, include your primary keyword in your title with one important LSI keyword if possible. You can also include parts of the LSI keywords and words do not need to be in the order. Next, include your primary keyword as the name of the featured picture. Another one, include your primary keyword in the introduction, the first 200 words with the one or two LSI keywords. The sixth, use primary and LSI keywords in other pictures, names, and alt text in the article, but in the way that it makes like you would be explaining it to a blind person. Include your primary and LSI keywords in your content, but keep it in a natural way don't stress about keyword density. LSI keywords can be mentioned only once. And lastly, include your targeted keyword as the anchor text in other of your articles. 
keyword placement is still very much an important part of your on-page SEO and you should not neglect it. However, you should also be very careful as keyword stuffing is against Google quality guidelines and can lead to getting penalized. The ninth important practice of your B2B blogging is to ensure you spend time on your internal linking strategy. Internal links are very important for SEO and unfortunately many marketers are skipping on these, which is a huge mistake. Internal links are used by search engines in numerous ways like Google is using internal links and the anchor text to get a better understanding of your content. Internal links are the number one way how Google discover your website and the entire internet by crawling links on your web pages. Search engines are using internal links to understand the importance of the page. The more internal pages are linking to a particular page, the more authority Google gives the page. With internal links, you can spread your page rank to other prominent pages that do not get as many backlinks to improve your ranking. For example, your product pages can rank higher in search using internal linking. Internal links help you to lower your click depth, and the lower click depth, the more search engines perceive the page as important. And that's why internal links are so important for SEO and you should always make sure your new pages get relevant internal links from your other pages. The 10th best practice for B2B blogging is to check your on-page SEO score. Nowadays you have a lot of cool tools to check how well you have optimized your blog post for on-page SEO. But there are two tools I really want you to recommend and I always use them as a second and third part of SEO eyes. The tool number one SEO plugin to check on-page SEO score. SEO plugin like RankMath gives you an SEO checklist for on-page and content SEO for every of your web page to ensure you have applied the best SEO practices for your new blog post. It also helps you to implement schema markup for your blog post, create your title tag and meta description, and so much more. SEO plugins are a huge help for SEOs and regardless you are a seasoned SEO or a rookie, you should be using SEO plugins such as RankMath. And tool number two, on-page SEO checker. On-page SEO checkers like from SEO ranking reveals errors that prevent your pages from ranking high in SERPs. It gives you a comprehensive analysis for your blog post and checks how a certain page is optimized for certain search queries, whether the page complies with the ranking factors as well as analyze the content for uniqueness and technical errors. SE ranking on-page SEO checker analyzes parameters like domain characteristics, title and meta, page URL structure, index analysis, image analysis, keyword analysis and so much more. And if you compare the two scores from SEO plugin and on-page SEO checker, you can see that according to the SEO plugin, my score is nearly perfect. But according to the on-page SEO checker, there is still a lot of things I can improve on. So for me, both of these tools are essential to always publish fully optimized SEO articles. Another very important practice for B2B blogging is to keep your articles always updated. This is one of the hardest parts of blogging as you will need to revisit your articles on a regular basis and update them before you start losing ranking, organic traffic and leads. This means adding more information, rewriting outdated information, changing pictures, improving word count or even scrap everything and start from the start when search intent changes. Updating your old content is essential for your articles, especially for those that rank high in SERPs and drive organic traffic and all leads for your business, as if you don't do that, you can get replaced. So make sure you keep track of your articles and once you notice your ranking, click-through rate or organic traffic is dropping, it might be a sign that it's time to perform historical optimization for your blog post. So for sure, check out my video on how you can do that or read my article. The next important part of your B2B blogging and your B2B blog strategy is to grow your backlink portfolio using guest posting. Guest posting is almost as old as me and we still function very well. No, seriously, despite guest posting is being one of the oldest link building strategies, it is still very effective if you do it right. And link building expert Mandy stated in his video on SEO prediction that backlinks might become even more important and 50% of his backlinks come from guest posting strategy. However, you must do it right because Google does not fancy guest posting for link building and they devalue the backlinks as guest posting results in unnatural links. With that being said, if you want to learn how to properly start with guest posting, you can watch my video right here or read my article so you can avoid the biggest mistake that can cost you a lot of your time, resources and not get the results you expected. Another best practice for B2B blogging I have for you is to create your social filters for SEO 
as part of your on-page SEO effort. Social Fortress is a process of building your online presence by registering your business and claiming your domain on social media to get backlinks and then adding links on your website to your social media to connect them together in order to start building trust with Google and your users. The reason why Social Fortress is important is that when you create a new website, Google puts you into the sandbox according to Matt Digity. And this is because Google has very little information about your new website to decide if you are a good boy or bad boy. And by creating a social fortress, you will start mimicking the way how common business start their online journey. They create websites, register on social media, start sharing their content there to attract a few users to their website. So this works as a trust signal for Google about your website and blogging, and it is very important to not skip this step. Plus, Google gets extra source of information about your business, which at the beginning has very little. For example, as you can see, I have created my YouTube channel where I have linked to my website and my LinkedIn company page, and both get me backlink from these authority websites. And on both of these platforms, I am sharing my content to increase traffic to my blog post and generate social signals. And of course, I could register on other social media like Facebook and Twitter to improve my social fortress for SEO even more. And the very last best practice for B2B blogging I have for you is to analyze your competitors' backlinks. Competitor backlink analysis is one of the best ways to start your link building campaign as it gives you important information about how your competitors are building backlinks, what is working in the industry, finding high quality backlink opportunities, and so much more. For example, you can use SE Ranking Competitors tool to get a list of your close competitors based on your ranking keywords. Then you can select one of your close competitors, for example, with a similar domain trust, and pop their domains into SE Ranking Backlink Checker. Here you will get plenty of useful information about the competitor backlink profile, such as the number of backlinks, referring domains, the do follow and no follow ratio, and more. And then you can go to the pages report to see what pages generate most of their backlinks. As you can see, this guy is going hard on affiliate keywords. Anyway, competitor backlink analysis is a great way to find great ideas for B2B blogging. Understand what pages drive the most backlinks or what pages are the most important for your competitors. And there you have it, 14 best practices. I hope you have learned something new. So please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel Put a like, leave a nice comment below and check out all my links in the description for my favorite SEO and content marketing tools. Ciao!